بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اینڈ ٹو ڈے واٹ ٹو ڈے ود این ایگزامپل آن دی لوڈ لائن اینالیسز فار ڈائی اوٹ ناؤ ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی ہیو ناٹ سین لوڈ اینالیسز بٹ وی آلریڈی سین اٹ بفور وی ہیو سین اٹ بفور ڈسکسنگ دا ڈائی اوٹ ایکویل اینڈ سرکٹس بیکاز In that case, we needed the Q point of the diode and the Q point is obtained from where? It's obtained from the load line analysis. So over there, we discussed a small example. Today, we may apply the, 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 the diode equivalent circuits as well. So let's get started. We'll, we'll revise the thing first. So let me give the heading is a load line analysis. You know basically what it is. So what is a load line? A load line is the line obtained from the circuit equation. Fine. And then why is it called a load line analysis? So that I'll tell you. So let's say we consider a simple circuit where this is a DC battery source having a plus minus potential. A diode is connected in series and then you have a resistor, a load resistor connected. And previously maybe I've used other terminologies. Let's say over here I'm using E. Previously maybe I've used a, 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 a V or something like that. So this is a resistor R. Maybe previously I've named it by an RL because this time I'm going uh, in accordance to the book. Fine. And of course a ground has to be connected. So if I miss the ground, so you have to show the ground somewhere. Anyways, so if this is a, uh, if this uh, voltage source is connected across a network, so what will happen is if the circuit is complete, so a current will flow and this is only a single current flowing through all the, cap uh, through all the things. So let me name it as a current ID. We'll have a plus minus drop over here of a VD, a plus minus drop over here of a VR. Is that fine? It is. If you apply KVL to the circuit, If you apply KVL to the circuit, so it's it's a it's an E. So have they named it like this? Oh, let me check the book. Yes, a plus E minus VD. So they have represented this by a minus the voltage drop and the voltage rise by a plus. You know this from your basic circuit analysis. And then you have a, a, a minus VR again, and this is equal to zero. So or I can write this as an ID into R. Or I can write that E is equal to, or, or, or let's say what the book has written is, yes, E is equal to VD plus ID into R. Yes, it's like this. E is equal to VD plus ID times R. So we've got the two uh, variables, VD and ID. And what are those two variables? So I, 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 I show them over here. The voltage across the diode, the current through the diode, and the diode characteristics. So have a look, these are the diode characteristics. This is let's say the barrier potential or the knee potential or whatever it is. So now we have to find the load line. The load line uh, is, is what? It's due to this, this circuit. The, this is the circuit equation. So the load line is obtained from this equation, right? So we'll put uh, what uh, we'll find uh, it's a line. So we need two points. So we'll find the two intercepts. So y intercept, the x intercept. So for y intercept, we'll put vd equal to zero and find the value of id. So id is equal to what? Id is equal to uh, e upon r. And when is this? When your vd is set to zero. So when VD is set to zero, you have ID is equal to E upon R and, and this is somewhere the value which is E upon R is the Y intercept. Similarly, when you find the X intercept, you have ID equal to zero. So E equal to VD. E is equal to VD when, when you have your ID equal to zero, which is the X intercept in this case. So over here, let's say it lies somewhere E, you have the You have the line by the by the combination of both joining the two and this line is called the load line. This line is called load line. Now load line analysis is what? It's the analysis of this figure now. This figure, the combination of both the diode characteristics and the load line. Why have we drawn it on the single characteristic curve? Why have we drawn it on a single curve, both of them? Because the, the variables are the same. If the variables are the same, so we can draw the curves on a single graph. Fine. Now, what's the Q point? So the Q point is the intersection of the two. This intersection point, this is known as the Q point, which is the operating point of the diode, which is the desired voltage and current through uh, in the circuit uh, in where the circuit would operate. 
fine they have also explained the significance in the previous video that let's say uh, over here if i consider so the characteristics is what it's the current given by the device and this blue is what this blue is the current needed by my circuit so previously the current given by the device is less than the current needed by my circuit similarly at the right side the current given by the device is greater than my required requirement so at the q point the current given by the device and the current required for my circuit is the same and that is why we need the q point and that is why we operate the circuit at the q point so this is this was a revision this was a revision of the diode now excuse me i also have a cup of tea for myself because the weather is quite cold and my throat is also not feeling well so anyway so this was the 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 revision now let's say we move to an example we move to an example where the circuit is the same e is equal to 10 volts example 2.1 the same circuit okay consider this circuit let's say i name it as figure one so example 2.1 says what that consider figure one Now, if you've written this figure in short over there, so you need to represent it short over here. This is the thesis rule. Wherever you, 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 you show it as one thing, so you have to show it when you want to, uh, uh, to, to, to point towards that, so you need to show it the same way. This is the rule you, you have to follow in your thesis, okay? Something you will know with the coming time, but it came over here. Now that I cannot write a complete figure over here in the thesis, if I've written a shortcut over here, fine? Anyways, so E is equal, E is given which is 10 volts, fine, E is given which is 10 volts, uh, it's a silicon diode and then you have the resistance of a 0.5 kilo ohms, uh, the diode is silicon and the resistance is 0.5 kilo ohms, what else is given? So nothing else is given. You are asked to find VDQ, IDQ, and then VR. VDQ, IDQ, and VR is unknown. So VDQ, IDQ are, are these things, right? The, from the Q point. This will give you the VDQ, and this will give you the IDQ. So, so let's say we get started. We get started with what? ID is equal to... Uh, we find the intercept, but what, what we need is first we need this curve. So the curve is like this. The, the characteristics are given. This VD, this ID. Now you have to draw them on a proper scale. This I'm drawing only for the understanding purpose, okay? You will not understand it unless you have drawn it on a proper scale. So I believe it's fine. Or not? No. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Still it's not fine, but let's say what. So this potential is given to be 0.5 volts. This potential is 0.5 volts. So it's the NEEP voltage or whatever. Okay, so now what do we have? Uh, we need to find the intersection, the Q point. So what do we do? Uh, we, we replace, uh, we, we, we take these formulas. So ID is equal to E upon R. So ID, which is the Y intercept at V D equal to zero. So this is E is 10 volts and R is 0 0.5 into 10 power three. And this is when, this is when uh, your E is equal to V D is equal to zero. When V D is equal to zero. So ID, uh, the value comes out to be 10 divided by 0 0.5 and this is 20 milliamperes. Yes, this is 20. So this is 20 milliamperes. So over here you would have somewhere a 20. ID is in a milliamperes range. VD is in the volts range. Fine. Yes. Now your E is equal to VD. Where? When your ID is equal to 0. So this is equal to 10 volts. So somewhere over here, let's say I have 10 volts. So if I join the two, I have my load line and this intersection point will give me my IDQ and my VDQ. And the intersection point obtained is this one and it's this one. So what are the values? So I've drawn them on a proper graph. It's 0.78 volts and 18.5 milliampere. 
0.78 volts and so this implies what that VDQ is 0.78 volts and IDQ is 18.5 milliamperes. So you've got your VDQ and IDQ. Now for VR, VR is what VR is ID times R. So VR is IDQ times R and this you can put the values 18.5 into this VR. So this you get 9.22 uh, and this is a 9.22 volts. Yes. 9.22 volts and uh, you can also have it through the other for the, the key will vr is equal to e minus vd so you have the same thing again or uh, e is equal to vr minus vd so you put the values and this so just let it go let it go okay so this is the the book has mentioned something so you you, you study it yourself we are is equal to e minus vd and something like that so this is the simple thing you know right ohm's law the voltage across a resistor okay now what happens now what happens you can also determine the dc resistance you can determine the dc resistance and that is what the dc resistance so that is you know very well the dc resistance is uh, rd so you could say this is vdq upon idq or it's I, uh, v is equal to ir so v is equal to ir so r is equal to v upon i right so you can say vdq upon idq and this will give you the values you've got both the values and you get the answer to be 42.16 ohms 42.16 ohms so this is your 42.16 ohms so now what does the dc resistance mean this means that you could replace the diode in the circuit by the given resistance but when under these operating conditions when you have this diode current and this diode voltage these operating conditions so under these operating conditions you could replace the diode by this resistor Na let me name it as r1 so this becomes your R1 and this was your initial R and this is your E. If this is your initial R, this is your R1 and this is your E. So you've replaced your diode by the equivalent <coughs> DC resistance. Is that clear? So that's example 2.1. Example 2.2. Repeat. Example 2.1 using the approximate equivalent model. Example 2.2 use the approximate equivalent model. Approximate is what? That you have the diode resistance you ignore over there and you drew what you you have the barrier potential and the graph rises expo uh, straight linear graph at this knee knee potential or what barrier potential so this graph is for this approximate model so the circuit is the same so uh, this implies that the load line would be the same fine Similarly, then uh, the, the but the diode characteristics have changed, so the Q point will change with respect to that. Now we have a new point, which is this one. So you will have new values, and those new values obtained are what? Those new values obtained are VDQ is 0 0.7 volts. 0 0.7, right? I've drawn the graph a little wrong. I've drawn the graph a little wrong, yes. Uh, so, anyways, uh, this graph I should draw over here somewhere. Yes, yes, it's, it's, it's not directly over here. It should have the barrier potential, right? So, the barrier potential would be somewhere over here after it has crossed the barrier potential. So, over here I will draw the diode characteristics. Fine. So, this would be my Q point now not that I've just made a mess out of it so anyways so now for this particular condition for this particular condition what do I have I have my VDQ and IDQ values by the 
by the intersection of the two curves and that is what VDQ is 0.7 and current is 18.5 0.7 volts and this is 18.5 milliampere so have a look have a look what do we have a difference the current is the same and in by changing the model and the voltage so we have just a 0 0.08 difference so which is again something negligible difference right so you have a negligible difference so what does the book say again now the resistance at this point rd is again again you can find your rd from this case as well rd it's again uh, uh, this thing 0 0.7 upon 18.5 into 10 power minus 3 so you get what i think it's 38 or something 37.84 ohms 37 point 84 ohms which is still which is still in some range it is still in some closeness to the value 42 38 and 42 so which means that you can apply the what the this circuit uh, a linear graph the approximate equivalent model why because it's not getting us a lot of change is that fine it is example 2.3 you use the ideal diode model in example 2.3 you use the ideal diode model okay so example 2.3 use the ideal diode model So what is the uh, ideal diode model that there is no resistance of the diode there is no barrier potential of the diode you only have you only have nothing either it's a short circuit either it's an open circuit so you have a straight line at the origin you have a straight line at the origin so this is for the for this so now for this case what would you have you have your VDQ VDQ is 0 volts and then your IDQ is 20 milliamperes. So which means now over here you may have a problem. And why is that? Because we've got quite a significant difference in the voltage levels. The resistance, so why are we calculating only the DC resistance in this case? Because the applied network is a DC network. Have a look, we have a DC source. So now the resistance of the diode RD would be 0 upon something X. So this comes out to be uh, yes what is yes so this comes out to be zero ohms and and this means what this is a short circuit equivalent right so so that is what i told you that is what i told you that you have a short circuit equivalent when it's forward biased the q point is this one right the q point is this one now uh, let me tell you that the you, you know this basically but in the revision I missed that the characteristics are fixed for a device model. If you change the device the characteristics will change or if you say fixed for a model as well in this case as we are changing the diode model so the characteristic is changing which means again that we are changing the device you could say right and then you have what you have the the load line so that is fixed for a circuit and in this case we only had a single load line represented by this blue color because we did not change our circuit which was figure one and this is something you know so that is it for the video let's see if we let's see if we have something in the book now you know what to replace the circuit with in the approximate equivalent order let's say we you had the piecewise number first was the piecewise linear model or what and and in that case you you had to replace the the this by your resistance of the diode rd and the barrier potential of the diode rd and barrier potential so this and the curve you need to draw was like this 
where a potential achieved so this curve you had to draw linear although it's not linear and i believe i made a mistake while while telling you about the equivalent circuits over there i draw it straight like this so this is wrong okay in the piece wise you assume the exponential curve to be linear fine yes then you have the constant voltage drop model or you had the simplified equivalent circuit you know the names i'm just telling you so in that case you ignore the resistance which is this one that's approximate you only show it by your barrier potential this barrier potential you only have to show the diode over here by the barrier potential if you want to if you're interested in drawing it in the diode in that case the the curve is like this the barrier potential is achieved this is the curve that we've already drawn over here and and and, and for the for the ideal diode model what do you have you have a short circuit so so the the curve lies where the curve lies on this axis and it's either an open circuit when it's reverse biased so i believe i am clear right let's see if we have something in the book that i've missed <coughs> the same set of axes at the straight line defined by the parameters of the network this is called the load line analysis So we have now a load line defined by network characteristics, point of operation, this and that, nonlinear characteristics. We know the load line is solely defined by the applied network, whereas the characteristics are defined by the chosen device. I've already told you over here. The DC point will remain the same. We know that we replaced it, right? Equivalent model. So relatively close in the approximate model, the calculations are and then using the ideal diode so including the 0.7 volt offset suggests example 2.2 is more accurate okay and then you are given that where will we use the ideal diode model where the applied voltages are considerably larger than the threshold voltage so over there we would use the ideal diode model what we would mostly be using uh, wait wait a minute okay it's fine so what would be mostly using is the approximate equivalent model okay this is vb the approximate equivalent model we would be mostly using the ideal diode model when would we use when the uh, applied voltages are far greater than the threshold voltages we have applications later on maybe not in our course but you need to know this i finish this video over here see in the next one very soon inshallah till then take care of yourself and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers goodbye